My ex-wife, 27, makes bad financial decisions and is constantly struggling. Since leaving her, I, 29, am much happier and have a more secure future. I still feel so bad to watch her struggle and be depressed because she's my kid's four-year-old mother. I, 29, left my ex-wife, 27, about four years ago, mostly because it just wasn't working out. We got married in the first place about a year and a half prior so that she could get residency in the state that she was going to college in for lower tuition. And then we had a surprise child because she wasn't taking her birth control correctly, and it put a lot of pressure on us. We had a pretty decent relationship. She wasn't a bad person, but she wasn't right for me. I didn't want a child at that time. I didn't love her, and I was afraid staying with her would make me resentful of her, and more importantly, my son, who I was absolutely crazy for. She was also making tons of bad financial decisions, and it was getting us both in the hole. So after going back and forth for a while, I finally left her when our son was six months old, with the commitment that I was going to be the best father I could possibly be to him and never be out of his life. She did not take it well. I agreed to take on all of the debt from our relationship, almost 7K from frivolous things like curtains, purses, etc., pay for her car payments so she wouldn't be left with any bills when having to find a new place to live, and split everything for our son, 50. 50 moving forward. We sold our house, split the difference, and went our separate ways. Eventually, I started dating again, and a year later found a great girl. I'm still with her now. She's amazing, loves my son, works perfectly with me, and I'm completely in love with her. We just bought a home together and she's my best friend. I'm sufficiently scared away from getting remarried for quite a while, but all the same, it's an amazing relationship. I'm still in the same job and I've moved up quite a bit to a place where I've got an amazing career that I love. I make a good income and I paid off all of the debt. I'm very happy, my ex not so much. She tender dated for a while and had a few on-again, off-again relationships that didn't ultimately work out. I am not very close with her personal life, but she doesn't seem to be involved with anyone or want to date. She did buy a little townhouse condo, and she is fairly responsible and able to earn money and pay her bills, but she constantly struggles to make ends meet. She spends the money she has on home decor or other non-essentials, etc., she recently abruptly quit her secure office job to be a bartender because she hated the first job. She didn't have anything lined up when she quit, but was able to find a bartending job. She didn't like it, though. Then she started applying back for office jobs, but quit the bartending jobs before she got any. And then she didn't get the job she was applying for. So now she's driving Uber as her primary source of income and struggling like a lot. She is able to provide our son with his needs. For now, as much as she struggles, she is able to feed and clothe our son 50% and doesn't often ask me for much. If she does, I know that she needs it and I am almost always able to help out. We are good co-parents and communicate regularly, but I feel absolutely terrible that the mother of my son is struggling. I want to just give her money, but I am afraid she won't be smart with it and will spend it frivolously. Meanwhile, I am able to afford a few frivolous things once in a while. She wants to move to the South to be with her family, but I am not interested in living there at all. Overall, I just feel bad that my ex isn't happy. I wouldn't really care if it wasn't also my son's mother. Outside of him, I feel like she made her bed and has to lie in it. Her problems are mostly the result of her decisions and not just bad fortune. And she is absolutely capable of building a better future for herself. She just finished her bachelor's degree with honors and definitely has some earning potential. But she is just miserable watching me be so happy and living a life that I love while she is not. I feel like her being stressed and struggling will affect our son. I know she loves him, and she's a great mother, but damn, 
I feel like this is all my fault. I am there for my son 100% and support him as much as I can. I see him half the time, and I'm there for every minute that I can be. But I feel responsible for half of his life being with someone who is depressed, struggling financially, and watching me be happy, successful, and bettering my life. Of course, in a perfect world, she would be happy that I am happy, but that's not realistic for most people in her situation who were comfortable in their relationship and then got it all taken away from them just to watch the other person live their life to the fullest. For the record, my son is developing beautifully and he is a happy, cheerful dude with tons of smarts and compassion. I have no indication that this is messing him up, but he's only four. To sum everything up, I broke up with my ex-wife and she has been miserable ever since. I'm happy and fulfilled in my new life, but I feel guilty that my son has to spend half of his life watching her be miserable. How do I come to terms with that? Edit. It's not surprising, and while there is some feeling of validation in my decision, she has also surprised me with her ability to get her life as together as it is. It's really tough these days for people with student loans and trying to make it on their own, especially by themselves. So while I'm not surprised, it does still make me feel bummed out to know that she's struggling. I had honestly hoped that she would find somebody else by now. Edit 2. I do offer to cover things, and when it comes to stuff like piano lessons and soccer lessons and stuff like that, I will be paying for the cost of those things. Right now, we split the cost of daytime childcare and the expense of his health insurance depending on who can give him a better plan for the calendar year. He has his own room with his own toys and clothes at my house, and we split the cost of buying new clothes and other things like winter gear and things that he will be taking back and forth between houses by just telling the other person what they spent and covering half of it. Edit 3 I also want to mention that my girlfriend is a big part of my son's life. In a lot of ways, she is sort of like a big sister to him. That's the kind of relationship dynamic between them. She knows that he has a mother, and she's not trying to replace that. But of course, she loves him and wants to play with him. Her and I own a home together. And if I wanted to stay in my son's life and allow my ex to move to the South, I'm essentially telling her, that I'm going to be leaving her as well. My son would miss her dearly, and it would be unfair of me to give her that kind of ultimatum where she will essentially need to do something to make my ex happy. Let's check out these comments. One of primary reasons you broke up with her was because your ex was irresponsible. Right, that is a good reason to break up, guys. It's just irresponsible. Somebody like that will cheat anyway. So, yeah. It shouldn't be terribly surprising that her irresponsible behavior has continued with attendant results. It seems to me that her main issue isn't that she hasn't found somebody else by now, although a support network is important. It's that she quit her job before she had another job lined up. That's not bad luck. That's bad decision making. Absolutely. Lots of people stick out bad jobs while applying for other jobs, especially if they have a child depending on them. She thought she'd have people backing her up and they'll save her. If you really want to help her, maybe encourage her with regards to her job search. I would offer to look over her resume. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Offer to take your kid whenever she has a job interview or just needs a bit more free time to apply to positions. She won't. He takes the child so she can have free time. You really think she's going to be a responsible adult? No, I have free time. I'm going to go have fun and do this. and do, No, I'm going to go shopping. I'm kid free. You got to understand these types of people. So she married you and moved to your state five and a half years ago to start college. You had a surprise pregnancy and then surprised her by leaving her when your son was six months old. While she struggled with finding a good man while she has a toddler. Not a surprise. She's managed to graduate college with honors, raise your son well, and keep a good relationship with you. Her plan was never to stay. You want to stay because you now have a relationship, 
Meanwhile, you've had one job you've progressed in this whole time. She wants to go where she has support, a support system, but you want no hardship in your life and just want her to somehow pull it all together while you live your happy life in your new house. Honestly, you are being self-centered here. What are the what are her options in the city you live in versus the one she wants to live in? Hmm. Someone said, I agree with you. A young divorced woman with a baby toddler isn't going to do well in life without financial skills and social support. Let me understand something here. You make quite a lot more than her, but you split things 50-50, meaning you do not have to pay child support. Who spends the majority of the time caring for the child? Who spends the majority of the time caring for the child? What she does with her money is none of your business, and you have a lot of judgment showing, someone said. Can you offer to cover more of your son's costs so, or some things that you can pay directly for? Hmm. OP has said a few times she makes terrible financial decisions. Simultaneously, when it comes to co-parenting in a situation like this, what's good for her isn't the only thing that needs to be taken into consideration. What's best for the child is 100% what needs to be taken into consideration. She needs to make better financial decisions. Simultaneously, the child needs their father and their life, and she can't just unilaterally decide to, to move, limiting the kid's contact with his father, OP. You're interpreting it 100% incorrectly. OP's ex could choose to make better decisions with her employment status and money for the sake of her child, but chooses not to. She wants to move closer to her parents because she's failed as an adult and needs that safety net of moving back in with them. Hmm. I'm more confused by why he has to move to the South if she does. Or did I read that wrong? Please help me to understand that. Because they share a child he wants to be around. This reveals an awful lot about your very biased perspective, someone said. This is interesting. Check out another story. Am I the a-hole for not letting my ex-wife use one of my cars to help her out with the kids? My ex-wife, 37 female, and I... 31 male, were together for almost six years and have two daughters, five female and seven female. She filed for divorce because she wasn't happy anymore with me, and we have now been divorced for almost two years. It was very difficult for me, especially not being able to see my daughters all the time, but we were able to arrange a 50 50 split custody agreement, and I also pay court ordered child support since I earn significantly more than her. But looking back, I realized that divorce was the right decision and the divorce has motivated me to pursue my career more and focus on my physical health. It has definitely paid off. I am in the most comfortable position financially that I have ever been and have been in the best shape of my life. So I guess in a way the divorce was a start for me to reach my full potential. My ex-wife and I have a good co-parenting relationship, but nothing more. I have been doing great, so the last thing I want is to have my ex entangled in my life more than she already is. I only communicate with her about the kids and shut down any attempt of her trying to involve herself in my life that doesn't involve our kids. My ex recently called me and told me that she hasn't been doing great financially and that she has completely burned through her savings to pay rent and bills on her own to the point where she had to sell her car a few months ago. She said that she has been using public transportation to get to work and pick the kids up from school, which she says completely stresses her out because it's an almost one hour bus ride to her work, making her late a lot and having no time to properly do anything besides work and picking up and taking care of the kids when she has the kids. I currently own two cars, one that I use on a daily basis to go to work and run errands. I bought a more expensive car about a year ago, and I pretty much only use it when I am going out on weekends or go on dates. Knowing that I have two cars, my ex asked me if she could use one of my cars to help her out 
so that she can have a life besides work and kids. I told her that her being able to have a life besides the kids has nothing to do with me and is not my responsibility. I told her that the kids are my only responsibility towards her and that anything else in her life is her problem since I'm not her husband anymore. She told me that I'm insensitive and that being terrible isn't going to lead to anything. I just told her that the financial security that I provide isn't something she has the right to anymore and that she has to deal with her own problems now. Edit. Everything our kids need is within walking distance of my ex's place. It's her job that requires her to take those hour-long bus rides. All right, let's check out the comments here. Not the a-hole. Any rebalancing of the finances should be handled formally in revising child support, not in lending her a car. She could damage or destroy. Mm-hmm. Not the a-hole. She didn't say she needed the car to improve the kids' lives. She wants it so she can have a life besides work and kids. How does she plan to afford that? Not the a-hole. You don't owe your ex use of your car. Your ex is responsible for her life and her choices. Your financial responsibility is your child, not your ex. That's the thing. A woman to have a child with somebody and they think they'll, they'll use the kids as a way to get support from their ex. Oh, your kid needs this. He needs that. She needs this. She needs that. And it's usually over the top. And it's just so she could benefit from it too. The consequences of divorce is that once the split is settled, you aren't financially entangled anymore beyond legal agreements. Expecting financial support over time beyond court mandated child support and alimony. She had a par she had a car post divorced. She had to sell it. The correct remedy for her would be to go to the courts to revisit child support or alimony. Guys, let me know what you think about both. Uh, struggling after marriage. Let me let me know what you think about both, and uh, I'm catch you guys at the next one.